Weekend in Grill, and we're joined by journalist Angela Millard, also family therapist Karen Phillip. Good morning to you both. Good morning. morning. Well, first up, ladies, would you let your children give report cards to their teachers? The Visible uh, Classroom Project allows students to provide feedback on their learning via their tablets. Angela, is this giving kids too much power? No, I think it's actually a great idea, Clint. And it's not kind of like an A, B, C report card. What they're doing is they're getting feedback on what works for them, what about the teacher is doing resonates for them. I think we're focusing very much on student outcomes. We also do a lot of observation in the classroom. But to date, we haven't actually asked kids how they feel about their learning. And this project was started by Bill and Melinda Gates three or four years ago. It's been very, very successful in those three, uh, those three approaches with the observation and the assessment. I think we need to listen to kids. They're the most communicative generation ever. They can tell you what they think. My 13-year-old, for instance, hates learning in a group loves learning as an individual. Now that's useful information to a teacher. It is, but I mean teachers are professional people and while when I read this I thought, oh yeah there's some merit here. My husband's a teacher and he read it and he was uh -oh. quite overwhelmed yeah. and thought how can we permit a child to critique a professional teacher, a mature intelligent professional. And that's where I've got a little bit of a problem. I'm but just Karen, not sure. Are they critiquing the teacher or are they critiquing the work and their understanding? They're supposed that, to be a completely well, different. They are right, supposed to be critiquing that, but whether they do or not. Yes. Uh, yeah. does, will it help kids learn? That's that's the ultimate question. I we guess. don't know. I, I think it'd be very interesting yes. to see how this progresses. I think it is an interesting study, but I'm just concerned that the the students perhaps may start critiquing the teachers, mm -hmm. yes. perhaps differently than what they'd like. It, that to said, it's a questionnaire, so it's really yes. just giving a response, and I think it's a sort of. ABC, not an AB as in a measurement, but a, a words response. Was that effective? Ineffective? Did you learn something? Those sorts of responses are helpful. And in America, it's apparently working very well. Well, as long as they're all honest. And <laughs> I, I was going to say, I wish I could critique some it. teachers when I went to school. Anyway, I like this one. Next up, workers in a Swedish city are trialling a six-hour working day. Yes, that's right, six hours. The council there believes it would create more jobs, increase productivity and reduce the sicky. Angela, could this work in Australia? Love it. I Let's really, go. I I've love done it. my six hours. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, you've no. already done them this morning. I love the idea that Swedes, they'll spend that time um, kind of make, uh, working out how to do their IKEA uh, oh, yeah. things. You know, because they're so flipping hard to put they a piece of furniture together. It takes six hours, doesn't it? Look, I think anything the Scandinavians do, we should, we should have a look at. Vodka, saunas, <laughs> IKEA, H&M. Honestly, it's all great, isn't it? How, how is it going to work? I mean, they, the, this report, they want... They want the worker to do their eight hour job in a six hour day. Mm. Now they're saying to cut back on sick leave, well, all this is going to do is put so much pressure, more both strain. physically, mentally, they're going to have more time off. I mean, I believe most of us, and, and I've had businesses for 30 odd years, and most of our staff, pretty much all of them, have always elected to do longer days, four days a week, to have what we call one day sanity, a day sanity off. Okay, so. They get their Saturday day and they can do everything they need to do and they may work eight or nine hours in a day and that works our sick leave and for the last 30 years in various businesses have been minimal. But don't Absolutely. you think the increasingly amorphous nature of work and so much as that it spills into your time thanks to devices, iPods, that sort of, and iPhones, always being on to the work culture, if you actually limit the number of hours you work, then that spillover, so your six becomes six hours plus three at home. Mm. If you've got eight, it's then plus three at home, which is 11. So I think, I actually think it, it kind of contains the day. Plus it also spreads the productivity over more people. There's a lot of industries that won't work for. I think a there's a danger of, of cutting corners, cutting too many corners. I think so. Exactly. If we're looking yeah. after our, our employer, employees <laughs> and our staff. Slack us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we need to do, we can't do an eight hour day in six hours. That yeah. The pressure it will put on us I is can. crazy. I find that if I, really get down and work hard for six hours, I can achieve so much more but than every five. single day of the week, five days yeah, a week, 52 not. weeks a year, no. <laughs> I do like the vodka idea though. That was, that was <laughs> and finally though, the cost of childcare has become so high that both parents are forced to work and hire outside help. Angela, are nannies the way forward for parents? I can't, I cannot understand how as a nation we go, ooh, every time we hear nannies, there's some kind of middle class indulgence. Nannies are an effective response to the childcare situation that we have. We had a nanny, we shared it, so it was $10 an hour per family, making it sort of $80 to $100 a day. With childcare places now up to 135 
dollars a day. It's affordable. Your child doesn't get as sick as often because you're sharing with one other child. There are a lot of merits to it, and we should be discussing it as a as a as an option, but e as a as a b as a rebated option, which is what Tony Abbott yeah, yeah I thought a rebated option yeah. would yeah. be good. But the problem is that. Because our work is no longer <clears throat> beg your pardon, nine to five, mm -hmm. we are working longer hours, we are working weekends, and there are no childcare flexible hours. It just hasn't uh, started to exist in this country. It does in many yes. other countries. So I think it's very important for a lot of the centres to be given funding and permission to actually open seven days a week and instead of shutting by six o'clock every night, mm -hmm. shut at nine or ten just to accommodate the families that actually do need those additional hours, and most of them seem to. Well, if mm. we're only working a six-hour day, it would become <laughs> yes. less expensive. Yes. Perhaps. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. See, they all fold into each other. Ladies, <laughs> thanks once again. Thank really you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Layla.